You might not have heard the term food systems ever before. However, when it comes to climate change and feeding the planet, it's actually one of the most important things that you could possibly know about. Because whoever you are in the world, wherever you live, you are affected by food systems. Whether you live in a little shack in the barren wastelands of northern Alaska or whether you live in the middle of a city, you are part of a food system in some way. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this. So the technical answer is that food systems are the interconnected systems of everything and everybody that influences and is influenced by the activities involved in bringing food from farm to fork and beyond. Now that's a very technical term. What food systems are are the people and organisations that are in any way involved in getting food from farms to your plate and beyond. Which means that when you consider the journey of a single piece of food from being grown and made through to eating it and disposing of it, there's an enormous amount of people that are involved. So let's go through an example for you. Now I'm a big fan of burgers so let's use a cheeseburger as an example. The moment that you sit down and you eat a cheeseburger in a takeaway, it might be a plant-based one, but anyway, the moment you sit down and eat a cheeseburger, you are participating in the food system as a consumer. So that's the first part of this journey. Then you've got the ingredients that are in that burger. So if we assume it's a meat-based burger, you've got a bun, a patty, some gherkins, some ketchup, and some cheese. So basically, five ingredients. Those five ingredients are made up of a load of other ingredients that were produced by farmers around the world. These farmers are part of the food system. In fact, they're probably businesses that are part of the food system. So you've got a farmer somewhere that grew the wheat that was made into flour that could make the bun. There's another farmer somewhere that probably grew the sesame seeds that went on top, but there's also a food producer somewhere that made the yeast go into the dough to make the bun right. There's a lot going on there. Then you've got the burger. Maybe that was just some ground up beef from a cattle farmer, but there might be other ingredients in there too. Then you've got the gherkin and the tomato sauce, which would have come from cucumbers and tomatoes. They might have been grown by the same farmer, but then they've gone different directions and they've been processed to make them into their final product, whether that's through pickling or whether it's making it into a sauce and probably adding some other things like salt and stabilizing agents. Then you've got the cheese that came from a dairy farmer somewhere and then was, was processed and produced into cheese. Now all of these producers, farmers, processors, these guys are all part of the food system. We've probably already taken in about 30 different people just to make those five ingredients. But we're not stopping there because all of those farmers and producers would also need a lot of other inputs to actually make the food we're talking about. For example, a farmer needs land to grow their crops on or for their cattle to graze on. They also need water, whether that's for the cattle to drink or to irrigate the crops. They also need diesel to run their tractors and combine harvesters. They might need some pharmaceuticals for their cattle if there's any illness. They probably also need some insecticides and pesticides to prevent their crops from being spoiled. Everyone would need electricity at some point as well, whether it comes from the national grid or it comes from solar power. All of these services are probably provided by other organisations that then also become part of the food system. Now, it's managing all of these inputs in a sustainable way, which is why the food system is so important to understand. And there's a lot more than this too. For instance, you've got packaging companies who are producing everything from the sacks that a farmer might put their grain into through to the hopefully recyclable packaging that you buy your burger in at the end. And in between there will be other packaging like the bulk packaging for your tomato ketchup that the restaurant uses. And then there's a whole chain of logistics networks that have to transport this stuff around the world. That could be by land, by sea or by air. It could be railway companies, it could be shipping companies, it could be your local lorry driver who just makes a delivery to the restaurant. All of these people are part of this food system too. It's just like gets enormous. And then once all of this food has been made, transported and made it to the restaurant and then the guys at the restaurant have produced it and cooked it and put it in some packaging and you can sit down and eat it. You pick up the gherkin because you don't like gherkins do you? You chuck it to the side and then we've got food waste now as well. So we've got something there that's got to be thrown away or recycled. So there's the packaging as well. So there's a whole host of other things after consumption that need to be considered. And then we're nearly there. 
there's another layer of people in the food system who probably don't even come into contact with the food. These are people often in government who make the regulations around how food can be stored and how it must be cooked to make sure that you don't get ill. The farming sub subsidies that are used to encourage farmers to look after the environment or grow certain crops. You've also got taxes that would be included in what you bought. There's all kinds of regulations and policies around food that also influence what we all eat. And these are all part of the food system too. In a way, it's like a kind of magic when you consider that there are hundreds, if not thousands of people who have been involved in creating that burger from the raw ingredients through to transporting it, getting it to your plate. Somehow, when you say you want a burger, it's there in a minute or two, which hides these thousands of people involved in doing that. It's a bit like magic, really. The food system is one of the most complex, efficient and technologically advanced systems in the entire world. It probably employs more people than any other industry and it has this insane ability to transform the work of thousands of people into a single burger at the click of your fingers like that. It's, it literally is magic. And I want to help you understand the food system a bit better so that you can make better decisions for yourself, for the environment and for everyone around you. If you like food and you want to learn more, hit like, hit subscribe and hit the little bell button so you get notifications next time there's an upload. See you soon. Bye bye.